we're down here at the Sport Aircraft Expo in Mount Vernon, uh, Illinois, and this is quite a show that they're putting on here. For a first year event, they're doing very well. In fact, not even for a first year event, they're just plain doing real well here. A great team led by their airport manager, Chris Collins, who's a young fellow with lots of energy, and uh, they're doing great here, I think. We must have, uh, I think, 40 or 45 airplanes here from different manufacturers. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's always a few doing demo, which of course is one of the goals of these things, but if you counted them all up, it'd probably be pretty close to 50, so it's a very credible turnout. Lots of nice equipment here for people to see, and quite a few people that have come in to see it. Dan, if there was an award winner, this has got to be it. Isn't this a pretty execution of the Cub? And, you know, this isn't just a replica. This is a pretty much a fresh design based on the look of the Cub. As you begin to examine some of the detail here, you're going to go again and again. No, they changed that too, didn't they? And they changed this. But overall, you'll see just a beautiful execution of this airplane. This is a really finished off, nice hardware, but a lot of other things too. They knew they needed to keep their weight down on this airplane, so they used a lot of carbon fiber components in this airplane. In fact, some people call it the carbon cup. And that was to make sure that they stayed within the ASTM standards. Took them a lot of extra work, cost them extra money, but when they got done, this one meets the standards right on the money and looks good at the same time. That's not easy. And they're using one of those aircraft engines on the front. Yeah, they got a regular old aircraft engine on it. It's called a Continental, and that's what's always been on the Cubs, and that's what's always been on the uh, Sport Cub as well. Uh, but they've also got their own engine that they're working on, a very powerful engine that's uh, on their Super Sport. We'll talk about that when that one gets approved, uh, but for now, this is one of our market leaders. I believe they're in about the number six position or something like that, and they sold a whole bunch of these things. And when we get a chance to look inside the airplane here, you'll see just how well this one's done. We finished off nice day. You know, it does look like a Cub, but it's really a lot more than a Cub. And I'm sure the folks at Cub Crafters who build this thing who also make a Part 23 version of the Cub called the Top Cub. So this is a company that knows how to do it right and has done so again in this airplane here. Just everywhere you look, from the fittings on the base of the joystick here to the floor panels, if you can see that, it's, it's a nicely fitted, uh, that's a plastic component down there, but it's just all finished off beautifully. This uh, lovely curvature to the panel just minor things, the accent behind the knobs and so forth, the color coordination, uh, just almost everything about it just speaks quality. And you pay a little more for that perhaps, but you get what you pay for. And this is another example of that. Very conventional. Here's a tail, tail dragger airplane. So you've got uh, front and rear joystick in the airplane. Uh, you've got, in this aircraft, they don't use the heel brakes. They use a regular conventional tow brake because it's a tail wheel airplane. You need to be able to steer it better. But it's got a breakaway tail wheel, so it'll really spin tight once you lock up one uh, wheel in a tight maneuvering situation. And uh, this one is uh, flown from the front seat as well, unlike the old-fashioned cub where you had to sit in the back if you flew solo. But I want to point out something else here, too. See these big seat belts? They look like, wow, that's, a, that's some pretty thick webbing there. Not only does it have that, this has the inflatable seat belts in them. So that in the event of a some sort of a forward collision, those seat belts inflate, give you an airbag basically inside an airplane. Very nice feature and a nice extra item that they add to this airplane that goes along with the whole finish. We look here at the front of the door, all nice and finished off with the light sport marking on it. Beautiful looking uh, door handle. I just it's just everywhere you look, you're going to find quality everywhere. So uh, in the airplane here, uh, you've got uh, seats that uh, they don't adjust in here, but uh, you do have uh, lots of room to get in and out of the airplane. You've got a lot of uh, fore and aft space, but you've also got some storage area inside the airplane. And you, all you have to do is here is look behind the aft seat. There they've got a box back there. You can tell it gives you an example. And behind that, he's storing his computer in the hat rack area. Then as we come back up here to the front again, we again just see nice fittings everywhere. Uh, your uh, fuel control over here built into the panel, throttle up here on the top of the uh, uh, door sill uh, with a nice uh, armrest capability, and right up above that is the flat panel with its detent button right on the top there. I'm not going to pull them down in the windy conditions we got here today, but uh, that's how they operate. And then off to the side, the old familiar sight gauge that are so reliable to know how much fuel you've got on board. Uh, nice open skylight all the way and one other feature here I don't know if you can get your camera in that far but it's got some 
uh, air vents up on top. That's not normally where you see them, but it makes sure that the person sitting in the back's got lots of airflow to make them nice and comfortable. So on the panel here, we talked about how it's just nicely executed for visual appearance. Uh, this one here has got sort of the six-pack split on the other side of the uh, uh, Garmin uh, 496 GPS and the radio stack. They do offer uh, electronic components if you want those kind of things as well, but for an awful lot of pilots flying this kind of airplane, analog is where it's at. Should we get out of this airplane? Well, you know, it's not too bad. They're not meant to be a high-performance cruiser. Uh, this is more of a utility airplane that can land out in all kinds of conditions. But it'll do about 111 miles an hour, I'm told, and uh, it'll slow down real well with these gigantic flaps. Let me look at these things for you here, Dave. We'll pull those flaps down, and you talk about your barn door flap. That's all the way down, and that's going to slow you down quite a bit. But, you know, that goes hand in glove with the high lift wing that's always been on the Cub that just makes them a joyful airplane to fly. And probably a great little float plane. Oh, I'm sure on floats this would just be a sweetheart. And they also equip it, I'm standing right by a pretty large tire here, but they do have some great big giant 26 inch Kevlar reinforced tires that will allow you to you can practically land on water with them. Of course that's not the intent, but if you landed on a gravelly roadbed or a, a riverbed right alongside the place you wanted to go fishing, no problem with those big tires on it. So if we want to get more information, Dan, where will we go? Well, the name of the company is Cub Crafters. They make cubs, so Cub Crafters and CubCrafters.com is their web address. And do you have a flight report on this or Yes, I have. I've gotten to fly this, and that's available on my website uh, at ByDanJohnson.com or BYDanJohnson.com.